Hello, good evening. Welcome to St Mary's Halesworth at 6 o'clock on Friday the 6th of September and I'm reading evening prayer on Friday in ordinary time from the Church of England's Common Worship Provision. You'll find the words at the Church's website at Arima's Daily Prayer, downloadable as app for Apple or Android device, and in the eponymously titled book in the Morning and Evening Prayer during Ordinary Time section, Evening Prayer on Friday. It's also a commemoration of Alan Gardiner, so if you'd like to pick up on uh, any changes to the standard running order, look up the 6th of September, halfway through amongst the saints' days and festivals. It being a commemoration, uh, it will just be standard evening prayer on Friday for the most part, uh, including the standard collect from the book, which I'll be using. So you might find yourself getting lost if you're following online, because uh, I copy and paste them onto a little table I refer to, um, so that we align with the book rather than the online provision. At that point, you're welcome to join me in the building, 8 and 6, Tuesday to Saturday, by Zoom, code on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on Facebook, and the audio will appear on my Dominic Tobel YouTube channel presently. O God, make speed to save us, O Lord, make haste to help us. A song of entreaty, hear my prayer, O Lord, and in your faithfulness give ear to my supplications. Answer me in your righteousness, and not into judgment with your servant, for in your sight shall no one living be justified. My spirit faints within me, my heart within me is desolate. I stretch out my hands to you, my soul gasps for you like a thirsty land. O Lord, make haste to answer me, my spirit fails me. Hide not your face from me, lest I be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your loving kindness in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Show me the way I should walk in, for I lift up my soul to you. Teach me to do what pleases you, for you are my God. Let your kindly spirit lead me on a level path. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake. For your righteousness' sake, bring me out of trouble. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. You'll find the psalms at the back of the book. Psalm 22 is the psalm appointed this evening. If you're following electronically, we just scroll straight onto it. Psalm 22. Be not far from me, O Lord. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my salvation, from the words of my distress? O my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer, and by night also, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forebears trusted in you, they trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered, they put their trust in you and were not confounded. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord, let him deliver him. Let him deliver him, if he delights in him. But it is you that took me out of the womb, and laid me safe upon my mother's breast. On you was I cast ever since I was born. You are my God, even from my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near at hand, and there is none to help. Mighty oxen come around me, fat bulls of Bashan close me in on every side. They gape upon me with their mouths, as it were a ramping and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, all my bones are out of joint. My heart has become like wax, melting in the depths of my body. 
My mouth is dried up like a potsherd. My tongue cleaves to my gums. You have laid me in the dust of death. For the hounds are all about me. The pack of evildoers close in on me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stand staring and looking upon me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far from me, O Lord. You are my strength. Hasten to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my poor life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, from the horns of wild oxen. You have answered me. I will tell of your name to my people. In the midst of the congregation will I praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. O seed of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, O seed of Israel. For he has not despised nor abhorred the suffering of the poor. Neither has he hidden his face from them. But when they cried to him, he heard them. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. I will perform my vows in the presence of those that fear you. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord shall praise him. Their hearts shall live for ever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he rules over the nations. How can those who sleep in the earth bow down in worship? All those who go down to the dust kneel before him. He has saved my life for himself. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be told of the Lord for generations to come. They shall come and make known his salvation to a people yet unborn, declaring that he, the Lord, has done it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Be not far from me, O Lord. Going past our first reading to the Song of the Justified, turning back in our books, evening prayer on Friday. Our hope is not in vain because God's love has been poured into our hearts. God reckons as righteous those who believe. We believe in him who raised Jesus from the dead. For Christ was handed over to death for our sins and raised to life for our justification. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Christ we have gained access to the grace in which we stand and rejoice in our hope of the glory of God. We even exult in our sufferings, for suffering produces endurance and endurance brings hope and our hope is not in vain because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. God proves his love for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have been justified by his death, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath? Therefore we exult in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have now received our reconciliation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts. This is reading from the diary of Alan Gardner. Captain Alan Gardner was absorbed in his desire to evangelise the South American tribes. The fact that all his efforts to do so had ended in failure was no reason for giving up the attempt. On the 7th of August 1851, the month before he died of cold, hunger and thirst, shipwrecked on the desolate shores of Tierra del Fuego, he wrote in his journal, Eleven months to the day we left England for this country, and have been graciously preserved through many dangers and troubles. The Lord, in his providence, has seen fit to bring us very low. In his infinite wisdom, mercy and love, he has removed many of his blessings, but for our good. For my part, I have abused the manifold gifts of God. I have taken for granted his daily mercies. Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner, and keep me so humble under your mighty hand, that I may not despise your goodness or faint, but rather wait upon your grace to profit from this and every other act of your providence. For I sense that there is a deep purpose in my present trial, and I pray that I may discern it from my own good. Help me to see myself in the light of your holy word, and to search and try my heart by it. May your Holy Spirit bring within me a true repentance which will bear fruit in the graces of love and faith and obedience. And let not this mission fail, even if we are not permitted to labour in it, but raise up others who will bring the saving truths of the gospel to the poor, blind, heathen around us. The South American Mission Society seeks to fulfil this vision of Alan Gardner and continues to make known the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, to the peoples of Latin America and the Iberian 
Peninsula. Just it seems so very sad that uh, his efforts ended as they did and that uh, he thought that, that was bringing God glory. I guess in a way he gave his life and uh, in a way that did seed the South American Mission Society. So to First Chronicles 21 from verse 1 to the first verse of the following chapter for our next reading. Chronicles is in the uh, history section of the Hebrew Scriptures, about a quarter of the way in to your Holy Bible. <clears throat> We're looking at the first book of Chronicles, so that's number one in the title of the book. We're looking for the chapter number 21, so that's within the book, large number in the margin. And we're going from verse 1, so that's right at the very beginning. And the small numbers are the verse numbers in the text. First Chronicles chapter 21, starting at verse 1. If you're following electronically, uh, you'll find under the wisdom reading that has been provided for us automatically, there's a link through to um, Arima's Bible browser presentation of 1 Chronicles 21 in the New Revised Standard Version. Uh, I tend to use that because most people wouldn't necessarily have the Apocrypha in their Bibles off the shelf at home. Not that I've got anything against reading the Apocrypha. So uh, 1 Chronicles 21 from verse 1. Satan stood up against Israel and incited David to counter the people of Israel. So David said, Job and the commanders of the army, go number Israel from Beersheba to Dan and bring me a report so that I may know their number. But Job said, may the Lord increase the number of his people a hundredfold. Are they not my lord the king, all of them my lord's servants? Why then should my lord require this? Why should he bring guilt on Israel? But the king's word prevailed against Job. So Job departed and went throughout all Israel and came back to Jerusalem. Job gave the total count of the people to David. In all Israel there were 1,100,000 men who drew the sword, and in Judah 470,000 who drew the sword. But he did not include Levi and Benjamin in the numbering, for the king's command was abhorrent to Job. But God was displeased with this thing, and he struck Israel, and David said to God, I have sinned greatly in, all that, I, in that I have done this thing, but now I pray you take away the guilt of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. The Lord spoke to Gad, David's seer, saying, Go and say to David, Thus says the Lord, Three things I offer you, choose one of them, that I may make it may do it to you. So Gad came to David and said to him, Thus says the Lord, take your choice, either three years of famine or three months of devastation by your foes, while the sword of your enemies overtakes you, or three days of the sword of the Lord, pestilence on the land, and the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the territory of Israel. Now decide what answer I shall return to the one who sent me. Then David said to Gad, I am in great distress, let me fall into the hands of the Lord, for his mercy is very great, but let me not fall into human hands. So the Lord sent a pestilence on Israel, and 70,000 persons fell in Israel, and God sent an angel to Jerusalem to destroy it. But when he was about to destroy it, the angel took note and relented concerning the calamity. He said to the destroying angel, Enough, stay your hand. The angel of the Lord was then standing by the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. David looked up and saw the angel of the Lord standing between earth and heaven, and in his hand a drawn sword stretched out over Jerusalem. Then David and the elders, clothed in sackcloth, fell on their faces, and David said to God, Was it not I who gave the command to count the people? It is I who have sinned and done very wickedly, but these sheep, what have they done? Let your hand, I pray, O Lord my God, be against me and against my father's house, but do not let your people be plagued. Then the angel of the Lord commanded Gad to tell David that he should go up and erect an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. So David went up following Gad's instructions, which he had spoken in the name of the Lord. Ornan turned and saw the angel, and while his four sons who were with him hid themselves, <coughs> Ornan continued to thresh wheat. As David came to Ornan, Ornan looked and saw David. He went out from the threshing floor and did obeisance to David with his face to the ground. David said to Ornan, Give me the site of the threshing floor that I may build on it an altar to the Lord. Give it to me at its full price so that the plague may be averted from the people. Then Ornan said to David, Take it and let my lord the king do what seems good to him. See, I present the oxen for burnt offerings and the threshing sledges for the wood and the wheat for a great of grain offering. I give it all. But King David said to Ornan, No, I will buy them, from for, buy them for the full price. I will not take for the Lord what is yours nor offer burnt offerings that cost me nothing. So David paid Ornan six hundred shekels of gold by weight for the site. David built there an altar to the Lord and presented burnt offerings and offerings of well-being. He called upon the Lord and he answered him with fire from heaven on the altar of burnt offering. Then the Lord commanded the angel and he put his sword back into its sheath. At that time David saw that the Lord had answered him at his threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. He made his sacrifices there. For the tabernacle of the Lord which Moses had made in the wilderness and the altar of burnt offerings were at that time in the high place of Gibeon. David could not go before it to inquire of God, for he was afraid of the sword of the angel of the Lord. Then David said, Here shall be the house of the Lord, and here the altar of burnt offering for Israel. So, um, the reason why I think the writer is saying Satan stood up against Israel and decided David um, was that if we trust God um, to provide 
and to fight our battles for us. We don't need to know how strong we are. And uh, David counted the number of fighting men in his, under his rule and command, so that then he would know, for instance, if he was looking over the border of the Philistines or whoever else, what their fighting strength was. So he wouldn't have to rely on God. He would just say, oh, I've got ten times what they've got, so uh, we can go and um, beat them up and send them home with their tails between their legs. Um, but Job, the commander of his army, said, why are you doing this? But the king prevailed, and Job came back, but didn't count everybody. <clears throat> and then we're told that God was unhappy and sends a plague. David is given the opportunity to decide what sort of plague David decides and then we are told that uh, just as the plague is approaching Israel David is out and about and sees the angel and is told by his prophet in this version that he needs to build an altar uh, which he does and that's why we've got an altar um, there which as David said is the basis the place where the temple was built before that the ark and the tent were at Gibeon we are told um, <clears throat> the altar of burnt offering the tabernacle were at Gibeon so uh, Samuel was uh, offered and lived in a temple in Shiloh we've got a note of a temple in Gibeon which is another place and uh, this threshing floor bought David says he, he must not he's not prepared to make a sacrifice to God that hasn't cost him anything um, so typically with David, we've got a very broken, messed up human, as we all are. He's done wrong in finding out how strong he is, so he doesn't have to rely on God. But in worshipping God, he recognises he needs to um, make a contribution himself. And sometimes we might be prepared to, um, I don't know, worship we're quite happy with. But uh, we still want to bank, let's say, with a bank that pays good interest, but is actually um, not very socially acceptable just as one example, or um, we might be very good at volunteering with a soup kitchen, um, but we don't tend to go to church with other people because we consider our faith to be personal. Um, we're all very complex, but God knows and uh, God honours David. Uh, in this story, we make mistakes, we can sort ourselves out, we can listen to those that know and do as they say, uh, as David did, and uh, God will be faithful and uh, recognise and hear and resolve our situation and circumstance. So um, if you're following electronically, I've just um, tapped on my tablet and clicked morning prayer and then back into evening prayer to get back to uh, where we were. Scrolling on now to uh, Mark 10, verses 35 to 45. If you're following the Holy Bible, Mark is the second of the Gospels. The Gospels open the second covenant, two-thirds of the way in. We're looking at the Gospel of Mark. We're looking at the chapter number 10, it's a large number in the margin this time, chapter 10. And we're reading verses 35 to 45. The verse numbers are the small numbers in the text, you may recall. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teach, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. He said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? They said to him, Grant us to sit at one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptised with the baptism that I am baptised with? They said, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptised you will be baptised. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognise as their rulers, lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. Do we come to God and say, well, I want to be this or I want to be that? Where does that come from? Is it because we want to uh, be recognised by the people amongst whom we live? We want some of that celebrity, some of that glory? Is it because we want to be recognised actually by God? I guess we know the intention in our own hearts. But in another version, we're told their mother speaks for them, the sons of thunder. But they ask themselves in this account. And uh, Jesus says, do you know what, you, what do you want me to do for you? Because they say, we want you to do what we ask. What is it you ask? One sitting right and one on your left. Jesus says, you don't know what you're asking. Are you able to, be, to drink the cup that I drink or be baptised with the baptism that I'm baptised with? 
that just sounds really esoteric. I can imagine myself saying, yes, I've been baptised, I'm happy to be baptised, I have been baptised, yes, that's fine. Drinking the cup, yes, we worship, we have a communion, Holy Communion, Passover, yes, we have that, that's fine, I'm happy with that. But uh, as is often the way in the scriptures, that's a euphemism. It's a uh, metaphor, and uh, Jesus is talking about his martyrdom when he talks about drinking and being baptised. And that's an example, I guess, that this is written late, because uh, the idea of martyrdom would already perhaps have been creeping in as being uh, an example of uh, drinking the cup uh, as a metaphor for that, being baptised with Jesus' baptism as a metaphor. And uh, he says, yes, you will be baptised and drink the cup that I'm baptised with and that I drink, but whether you end up at my right or my left, it's for those for whom it has been prepared. So uh, we might, might not actually... Um, find ourselves ending up where we want, doing a different job, in a different relationship, in a different town, in a different denomination. Um, but I actually think that that's a very positive example of conversation. Uh, he doesn't say what he says to, for example, to Peter, get behind me, Satan. Um, he engages with him. It's slightly teasy. It's like rabbinic. It's like debating, but he leads them on. It's a sort of a gentle chastising, perhaps, but it's also prophecy. And uh, we might, looking back in our lives, realise that we've had exp experiences of God that have um, set us up for the people we are and the place we are and what we're doing. But then, typically, um, those other disciples, these two talking, so the other ten, they're angry with James and John. So Jesus, actually, it's not about who's going to be the greatest, who's going to boss other people about. It's actually about who serves best. That's really the way around it is. Uh, the way where we are and the way we work. And that fits in also, I guess, with the idea of being persecuted, standing up for our rights, avoiding suffering. There's that balance, isn't it? Be as harmless as doves and wise as serpents. We shouldn't, I don't think, welcome suffering. We should stand against it, especially where injustice is involved or bullying or oppression. Um, but recognising we are loved and belong, therefore we don't have to search for status or privilege we can give a little because you know that if you like our dad is bigger than your dad and uh, everything will be sorted out in the end and if god came to give god's self as ransom who are we to look to uh, privilege and uh, to be the boss so to the responsory back in evening prayer on friday forsake me not o lord be not far from me O my god forsake me not o lord be not far from me O my god Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. To the song of Mary. You have scattered the proud in their conceit, and lifted up the lowly. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You have scattered the proud in their conceit, and lifted up the lowly. Sacrifice, Saviour, seal, three in one, one in three. We come to you at the end of the day, and we look back at those things where we have uh, experienced the difference that your sacrifice has made for us. Uh, the confidence that we have in ourselves because of our faith to be humble and to serve and not to assert our rights or dignity. Um, we might have made progress in jobs and tasks because of wisdom and knowledge that you've given us, either through learning or through revelation. And with, for these and other examples, we give you thanks. But the day may have been one of blindness and confusion, anxiety, lack of trust and hurt. It might have been put down because of our faith. It might have been distant or doubts might have crept in. And if that's been our experience, as we find ourselves being prayed for, perhaps by others, but nevertheless given the confidence to speak ourselves, 
Forgive my unbelief and uh, grant me faith. We pray. With Release International, we pray for all displaced people and refugees living in camps of Kurdistan. We ask that God would grant wisdom, courage and compassion to the authorities who are seeking long-term solutions and considering whether to close some of the camps. Because there isn't actually a place called Kurdistan in terms of the lines that the colonialists have drawn on the ground. But there is and are a people called the Kurds. And uh, this paragraph comes under the heading of Iraq from Release International here. Turning to Christian aid, they still haven't updated their um, prayer diary for September. So uh, I shall simply read uh, that from the 6th of August. We pray for communities facing devastating heat waves, particularly those places already experiencing drought. I think I prayed for that yesterday, so I might have uh, been a day early with that one. Church of England's prayers for the Holy Land, God of compassion and justice, we cry out to you. For those who cannot see anything but rage and violence, that you would surprise them with mercy and turn their hearts towards kindness for their fellow human beings. Joint Public Issues Team Prayer for Ukraine. Here our longing that leaders and nations will honour the worth of all people by having the courage to resolve conflict through dialogue. We pray that our own nation will work towards peace and not to instability to its own ends. We pray for our bishops Martin and Mike as they move on to um, pastures, new retirement and uh, new diocesan responsibilities. I discovered today that we've got a diocesan prayer for vacancy. Um, I haven't yet made it available for myself, but we do pray, um, as it were, slightly less formally, um, that uh, they and their families will thrive and prosper in their new chapter. We pray for the um, committees uh, and their uh, consideration of potential new candidates. We have discovered today from our uh, internal diocesan bulletin that the profile effectively has been written. And then we pray that the right person will be found as a result of that by the Central Committee. And we pray that they will uphold uh, the mission of God, um, praying presence in every community, uh, parish system, cure of souls, and uh, see that as being the bedrock and the foundation upon which other funded expressions of church may evolve and grow. And we pray that they will be able to uh, hold the church commissioners to account and draw down more money for standard ordinary church stuff. We pray for our Archdeacon Rich and for me as Rudal Dean as we cover our patches, supporting uh, the wardens and uh, ministers in those places. Thank you for the uh, pastoral mission committee of our dean we had today that I chaired. We pray the outcome of that might be a blessing to um, Waveney and Blythe, benefits and parishes associated with that patch and uh, my service and supervision. Uh, and further on, we pray for Sarah, Joe, Nicola and Mary, clergy in the Old Sandlings uh, patch benefice, benefices. We pray that uh, they and other ministers who work with them and lay ministers, also their church workers, treasurer and secretaries, that they will be inspired as they see you working through them. Pray for people who are homeless and suffer, and for organisations trying to help them, such uh, in general, small, uh, remote, uh, small communities that they're often just individuals, certainly in our town here, there are two or three that we know and see about. Sometimes they're under the radar, but in larger places like Bury and Ipswich, Beckles, Bungie, there may be a few more. Uh, but we don't necessarily, in the lowest off, we don't necessarily have the resources um, with such few um, to, to help them through. But we thank you for those organisations that are there. Uh, pray that we might become aware of them and be supportive of them as they us. And... Uh, we pray especially for increased funding, that social services may increase the level of care that we are prepared to offer as community to these people. Think of the men on their own, for example, who, even if they are experiencing addiction, stealing from others, maybe even potentially suicidal, they're not necessarily considered um, a risk in the same way uh, either to themselves or to others as uh, a woman would be on their own. I'm not saying that uh, women shouldn't be cared for first, but uh, I would suggest that we should have enough money to care for all those who find themselves in that position. Pray for Drethamu, who is Rural Dean of Murukulazo Deanery in Kigara Diocese, and Cosmas, who is pastor in Rubia Parish in Lueri Diocese, both in Tanzania. Uh, we pray that they might know your inspiration and your provision for them and their people.
We pray for blessing on the people and businesses of Linstead Road, Cookley Street, Mary Hill Lane in Cookley, and in Heveningham Low Road, Clay Hill, Barrel Hill, Heveningham Road, Church Road, Hurslet Road, Heveningham Long Road in the street. Brick Kill Lane, Barrels Hill Street, Laundry Lane, Bridge Street, Linstead Road, Crassfield Road in Huntingfield, and in Walpole, Hellsworth Road, Bramfield Road, Peasen Hall Road, Cookley Street, Cookley Road, the Clinton Eve Place, and Church Hill. Pray for those in those addresses whom life is a challenge at the moment. We pray that we'll break through in sovereign grace and make provision for them. We pray that they will have the um, strength or anger to pursue what help they need. We pray that we might play our part as church as being a place of solace and encouragement in the speaking up for them. We pray for those whom life is going well. May they turn to us for thanksgiving and support and to their neighbours elsewhere to provide time and capacity, money perhaps, um, to maintain the community in those places. We pray for uh, organisations of businesses based in or serving those communities. That they will thrive and prosper, um, being able to contribute goods, jobs and services to make the right decisions across the year uh, particularly if they're involved in hospitality and farming, perhaps, uh, making hay while the sun shines, coming to the end of that season. Know what they've made during the summer months, uh, see them through uh, to next year. Give them wisdom to decide whether to carry on or to stop. We pray they might have the ability to continue, however. And we pray a blessing on Jean and Veronica, Claire, John, David, Felicity, Molly, Francis, Anne, Brian, Val, Joan, Ginny, Paul and Carol. Vera, Kim, Jude, Rachel, Cynthia, John. And all others we know for whom life is a struggle at the moment. We pray that they will know your presence, where that would be helpful for them. We pray that they have a plan, they'll be able to celebrate, able to go through ordinary everyday days, the difficult times, looking forward to the highlights. Pray for those that walk with them, that they might have the support and encouragement that they need to continue being servants of these for whom we pray. We thank you for all that's good in the lives of Valerie, Jesse, Mary, Lee, Rosemary, Eric, Valerie, Beryl, Lynn, Peter and all others who have recently died, including those who have died suddenly and under prayer through sickness, violence, neglect, accident, those that have taken their own lives. Pray for those we've known and loved and seen no longer, those who are so faithfully here. To remember Alan Gardner, all whose years mindful at this time. We pray for us that we might have his zeal for the salvation of souls. I pray that we have greater success in recruiting. Rest and grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. We pray for ourselves and all who mourn the loss of a loved one or a change in life chance. And we pray that you will be for us the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Heal us, O God, from all our afflictions and keep us steadfast in your love. Bind up our wounds, raise us from death, and lead us to fullness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.